Um, the first question is from Linda. She's asking, is Cosmos only for Asian women? And do you know of other similar groups for non-Asians? Hi, um, I think it, it caters specifically to the Asian women X community um, or people who identify as, as Asian, but which obviously includes South Asian, but I don't know, I don't wanna say that there are other groups similar to this because I'm not aware of them, but I'm, I'm sure there are. This, I found the Cosmos on Instagram like any millennial. So um, I guess sort of through word of mouth or hopefully someone in this talk knows of something that they can share along. But unfortunately, I don't have any recommendations for not Asian women. <laughs> yeah, if you do with other groups, please share it in the chat. And then Jen, Alexandra, this is still for you. Jen is asking, uh, tell us more about your love of miniature crafting. That, um, like most hobbies, I think the past few months grew out of the pandemic. So I ordered a kit off of Etsy and made a very tiny um, workspace. And then I ordered uh, another kit and made a very tiny coffee shop. <laughs> um, I can put my, my miniature crafting Instagram on the chat if you want to see. It's very fun and soothing. <laughs> Please do share it in the chat. We want to see it. All right, we're going to go to Rukmini now. Rukmini, Sarah is asking, do you think that each person has his, her individual spectrum of emotion or do we fall on different parts of the same spectrum? Ooh, that's a hard one. Yeah, that is like, I wasn't ready for <laughs> Thank you, that's a very, it's a super thoughtful question. I need a very thoughtful answer for that one. So the question is, do we all have our individual spectrums or do we fall on a whole? What comes to me is both. I definitely we have our own individual spectrums. That's why exploring that is so important because how do we feel grief? How do we feel happiness? It's so different. And I think it's really empowering when we, when we really discover that. And then I think that there is like a human spectrum of emotions. Like we're one big human family. I really believe that. And so even now during COVID, I think we're experienced, we're on that spectrum probably of like heartbreak and there's different kinds of it, but we're all there as a human family. So I would say it's probably both. Thank you. Uh, then James is asking, can you share anything about your process for the 100 day project? Did you follow a certain daily routine to complete it? Oh, yeah, that's a very good question. I call myself like a 100 day enthusiast because I do it every year, but I'm not a consistent person. It's very difficult. So I have a different rule for each year. Like the 2016, I did do it every day. And what I like to tell people is I just made it very portable. Like I literally bought a sketchbook that'll fit in my bag, a watercolor set that'll fit, like, and I just brought it with me everywhere. So that really helps. And then some years I just give myself a break. Like this year I made it to like day 48 and I stopped for like four months and hopefully I'll pick it back up later on. So depending on where you are, creating your own rules helps. I love that. <laughs> All right, thank you. So now let's go to Jokey. Choki, Rachel is asking, how has your family reacted to your new writing path, considering it's a detour from your law career? I mean, your whole path is a detour. It's like yeah. a beautiful <laughs> idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, you know, I think, yeah, at this point, they're used to my detours. Um, initially, you know, I think it was a struggle to understand um, for my parents why I would leave like a safe job at a law firm, especially when I wasn't exactly sure of what I wanted to do. I had some kind of vague ideas, but wasn't concretely sure my next step and my next path. But at this point, I think once they saw that, you know, I feel like I'm in my element, I feel more free and more joyful, and I just feel more of service and purposeful, they were able to come around. So I don't know if that question was rooted in your own potential dynamics in your family, um, but I feel like people who love you the most will always eventually just want to see you happy. And that's what I am now. So I'm just really thrilled to have their support and to be, to be, have been on that journey and to find myself where I am today. So yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, Josh is asking, when will your book come out? That is a great question. <laughs> I am not sure. I'm still in the process of writing it. Um, I'm looking for an awesome writing group. If anyone wants to swap pages, who's also working on a book, that would be really wonderful. Um, yeah, and I'm looking for an agent and doing all those steps I need to do to get my book to birth into the world. Um, but yeah, it, hopefully within the next I'm, maybe this is ambitious, but hopefully in the next 18 months, I'm hoping to have the book fully available for people to purchase. So yeah, as soon as I can. <laughs> if you know anyone who's an agent, let me know. 
Actually, I might have someone to connect you with. So let's make sure we connect. Oh, okay, yeah, wonderful. Thank you. I, I want your book to exist. Um, oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, all right, let's do another round. We, we're still, we still have some time. Let's go back to Alexandra. Um, uh, Emily is asking, how is the Cosmos community keeping in touch during this time apart? Yeah, um, so they were doing a lot of virtual events, which was really nice. Um, I know Din is a fellow Cosmos member and um, did put some information in the chat about holding like care circles and sort of different Zoom events. They were doing different like speaker workshops um, and they send out a really wonderful weekly care package if you're just interested and don't want to commit to joining anything yet or attending anything. Um, but I would definitely start by following them on social media. Um, they've been doing a great job sort of keeping everyone in the loop and holding a nice safe space for folks um, during this weird and wacky time. Awesome. Um, one more question for Rukmini. Uh, what are some, Elise is asking, what are some of the most memorable, memorable emotions you illustrated for your dear Rooksy column? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, that project is very dear to me, no, no pun intended, but people send me such like, raw, vulnerable, heartbreaking, and wonderful emotions that I would draw. One person sent me something on death, actually. It was how they they loved this girl, and then they wanted to tell her that they loved her, and she had recently passed away unexpectedly, and they were dealing with that grief. It was like, that was like heavy, but it felt like such an honor to be able to draw it um, and try to even imagine what that felt like. And just that exchange with that person and how that drawing really helped them, like, see how they felt was awesome. So that was very memorable. Lovely. Okay, and Joki, one more question from you. This one is from Nikki. Uh, she or he is asking, how did you summon the courage to make career a career change? Mm, that's a beautiful question. Um, it came in stages, I think uh, I would say. Um, I really always knew and had been dedicated to doing work that was in alignment with my values. And the more I kind of stayed on the track in a law firm and, you know, was on that path, I realized I wasn't creating enough space to do that. So a lot of the work that was most in alignment with my values was my pro bono work and the things I was doing, volunteering on the side. But it just came to a point where I had to choose to pick myself. Um, and there was just no other alternative at a certain point. It just became a choice between, am I going to go full out and try to pursue my dreams and honor my heart? Or am I going to do what is safe and reliable and make other people happy? So it, it's not easy. It certainly wasn't easy, but it was honestly the best decision I ever made. The day that I mm -hmm. left my uh, former job, my last like stable job, as my family might say, mm -hmm. I was overjoyed. I really was because I was leaping out into the unknown. I knew that I was capable of doing something great. I didn't know what that was, but I just was so centered and I did a lot of just inner work to get into the space of trusting myself fully that I knew it was the right choice for me. So just whatever you can do to just tune into your heart and tune into your center because that space in you is always whispering to you where your next step is, where your next move is, what is right for you. And when you tune into that and align with that, only beauty can flow from there. It's, it's really just a magical process to watch unfold. And if you're considering doing something similar, I really encourage you to do it because life will support you. It's really miraculous. It really is. Thank you for your question. 